Hey everyone, how's it going? Heather here. Today I want to take a few minutes to talk with you about some of the most common questions that are coming through with regard to EMFs, particularly around the EMF 101 course that I am currently launching. The uh, registration for the course will be open for three more days. And so um, if you are someone who's really interested in improving your EMF environment, um, I would highly encourage you to sign up for the course because I'm going to go into great detail as to how you can do so. And these are going to be suggestions that you can apply, you can apply in your home. So when you're at home, you know, your kids are there, your family's there, how can we make it a super healing environment, EMF uh, free of EMFs or the lowest EMF load as possible. Um, you can apply the suggestions to your workspace, okay, how to create a really nourishing workspace. And I'm going to teach you how to create a really nourishing sleep space um, because we heal during our sleep. That's when we are meant to heal. However, when our body's frequency um, gets outside of that Schumann resonance, so the Schumann resonance is like this natural Earth's frequency, right? It's between about 7 to 10 hertz, okay? Um, the issues occur with our health when we uh, get outside of those uh, 7 to 10 hertz, okay? Um, when we tend to, to wander outside of those frequencies, um, such as when we're around a lot of man-made EMFs, um, that's when the health issues start to set in. So the entire course is going to be designed on how to teach you to uh, keep your EMF super low so your body, your body was biologically hardwired uh, millions of years ago to um, be in sync with these Schumann resonances, okay, between that 7 to 10 hertz. And we are venturing far outside of those uh, natural frequencies, the frequencies that our bodies align to. You know, the heart has a rhythm, uh, the brain has brain wave patterns, each of your cells emits a different uh, and very specific frequency, each of your organs. And um, those frequencies are designed to be in um, uh, natural rhythms that are in alignment with, with the Earth's frequencies as well. When we venture outside of that, that's when the health issues start to set in. So the course is really designed to take you through your entire home, your sleep space, your work, even when you travel, air travel. Um, I'm going to teach you how to detox um, EMFs from your body. See, this is that's a main thing is that when people start to change their environment, their EMF environment, meaning they improve it, meaning they lower their EMF load, they, um, they still have this residue in their cells and their tissues and their body um, of the, the frequencies of the EMFs. And the mitochondria need to detox these things out in order to come up to full uh, efficiency. So your mitochondria pump out energy, right? They pump out three major things. One is energy or ATP. The other is oxygen and water. And in order for your body to successfully do this, your mitochondria to successfully do this, they need a certain environment and certain frequencies to be able to attain these vital life tasks. When we alter the frequencies we come in uh, contact with, this really alters the way our mitochondria, the most important um, aspect of our health, how it functions. And one of the main side effects that I talked about in that free video um, that I posted for you all a couple days ago is that one of the major side effects of EMF toxicities is dehydration at the intracellular or mitochondrial level. Now, this is a type of dehydration that cannot actually be rectified by simply drinking more water. And um, however, this dehydration at the intracellular level, in order to truly rectify it, we have to change our EMF environment and then we have to detox those frequencies out of the mitochondria. So these are some of the main things that I'm going to be focusing on during the five-week EMF 101 course and there's also going to be um, two weeks of bonuses in that course plus a live Q&A course for all uh, people who, who join the course and sign up for the course. So let me get into some of the most common questions that people are 
are reaching out and um, asking with regard to this course launch. I'm just gonna read some of those off here. So the first question is, will I need to purchase additional equipment, devices, um, et cetera, as I set up my computer, home, office, sleep space um, to lower my EMF environment? Really great question. And yes, there are certain things that I am going to uh, advise you to purchase. Um, I don't sell these things. There's other companies who sell these things, um, but I'm going to tell you exactly who to go to, what to purchase, so that you can reduce your EMF load because your computer, your cell phone, um, certain lights in your home, these sort of things are all necessary to shift in order to decrease your EMF load. And so I'll walk you through that process. Literally, you're going to be able to do this for, um, I'm gonna just say rough estimate, I'm thinking in my head right now, $100 or less um, to buy all the things you need to improve the EMF environment of your home, office, and sleep space. So um, it's, it's well worth the investment um, and uh, you can even buy some of these things over time if you can only buy one or two of these things at a time like first you work on your computer and get that all set up and then you work on your cell phone and get that all set up and then you work on your uh, sleep space and then maybe you work on your diet and detoxification so you can go in um, in steps when you get these suggestions um, in the course and I'm going to give you links um, where you can go and purchase these things as you get ready to improve your EMF environment. So the short answer is yes, and it's going to be a very minimal investment, and there's gonna be a really high um, uh, return on investment with this, um, when you make this swap. Sorry, it's a little windy here today, but the sunlight's so beautiful, and um, we've got a really great UV index today, so I'm soaking up vitamin D while, while sharing this video with you all. Uh, next question is, how do I access the course material? Great question. So um, this coming Thursday, April 30th, the course will actually be launched. So those of you who are signed up or who sign up in the next few days, um, on Thursday, April 30th at 3 p.m. Eastern time, you will have module number one um, sent directly to your email. And each uh, following Thursday for the next four weeks after that, you will have modules one, two, or excuse me, two, three, four, and five. And then you're going to have two bonus modules. Um, we could call that six and seven sent to you as well. So that's about seven weeks total. And each week you'll get a new video and you'll get a workbook um, and you'll get instructions on how to make the changes that I discuss in during the modules. Um, and then the last week, week eight, there'll be a live Q&A. Another question that's come up is, hey, if I um, sign up for this course and um, I'm not able to make the Q&A, what happens? Don't sweat it, the Q&A will be recorded. Um, so, so, and then it will be sent to everyone who is signed up for the course. So you'll have access to that and you can re-listen to it as often and whenever you feel called to do so. Now, um, after the full eight weeks, the course is actually going to be up on, um, on my site, heathershepherd.com, and you all will receive instructions on how to have your own username and password to sign into the course to re-listen to the material as often uh, as you desire. So that's a little information on um, how you access the course. Um, Oh, another really great question is, can my kids use these recommendations? Absolutely, I highly recommend it. In fact, um, these are the suggestions that I give to my niece and nephew as well. Um, and they're what, three and seven. Um, and, and these are really, not only can you in, incorporate these uh, suggestions with your kids and into their lives, but I highly recommend it to help preserve their health, um, to help um, support their neurological development, brain development, um, to help support their mood. One really um, interesting thing is that my nephew used to have um, these tantrums. And um, I said, well, you know, let's try 
try uh, shifting to you know turning off the Wi-Fi and you know let's get you set up there and in getting blue blockers so we he made these switches he added these suggestions in. he hasn't had a tantrum since however there was one night and my sister texts me and she's like oh Johans had a had a tantrum last night and I forgot to turn off the Wi-Fi because they were still you know wireless then I said that is such great proof when you you make uh, you forget to do something like that or you, you have this first-hand experience and you notice a, an immediate effect kids are very sensitive to these frequencies and I I have seen so many kids improve their mood, their sleep. One of the most disturbing um, uh, things that's occurring right now in kids is that their sleep is really bad. And this wasn't so much a thing when I was growing up. I hardly remember any of my friends be like, oh, I can't sleep, I can't sleep. Now it's pretty common that many kids have issues sleeping and when you begin to have sleep issues from such a young age this is really going to impact your hormones your metabolism your cellular health and your mitochondrial health and for those of you who've been following me for quite some time now know that your health is only as good as your mitochondrial health really your mitochondria run the show there's hundreds to thousands of mitochondria inside each one of your cells and as I mentioned in the beginning here, the sole purpose of the mitochondria, or the main purpose I should say, is to pump out energy, oxygen, and water. And EMFs significantly um, diminish your mitochondria's ability to do those three things. And even when one of those things start to become compromised, sleep is going to start to become compromised as well. So um, absolutely 100%, not only can you do these, uh, implement these suggestions in this course and in the, in the details that I go into um, during the course with your kids, I highly encourage it. It's, it's, um, it's going to be a really important step to help preserve their health because, um, you know, even I think my age is, is pretty much the cutoff point of when, um, you know, kids growing up didn't really have cell phones. You know, my friends didn't have cell phones. Um, we didn't even have Wi-Fi then. It was all dial-up internet. Um, so we didn't have the exposure. You know, we didn't walk around with tablets to look at and watch, um, you know, in our strollers or even growing up or even with our friends. You know, we watched TGIF on TVs, yes, of course, but um the the amount of radio and microwave frequencies and wireless devices that we were exposed to in the 80s 90s um even like really really beginning phases of the 2000s was was minimal compared to what it is now so um these are really important suggestions to preserve the health of your kids because kids have not been exposed to this amount of wireless radiation um, at any point in time thus far. So these are really important, important things to implement for you and your kids as well. Okay, let's see, what else do we have here? Um, oh, will I have to give up any of my devices? I know that's a real concern we have. I love, you know, um, people love their, their iPad or their computer or their cell phone and really, um, there's, I haven't found any need to give any of those things up. Um, but there are ways that are really important to um, start to incorporate to help improve EMF load, meaning lower it. Um, and so you can do this on pretty much all of your devices. Now, some of the more tricky ones are going to be like, um, you know, like earbuds. Those are wireless and, and anything wireless, um, we're going to swap with how to make things, um, you know, not wireless because wireless is when the issue occurs. So um, we need to, to learn how to use our devices um, more so in a wired way because when they're wired the EMFs are significantly significantly reduced um, and that is the whole goal of this course and to lowering your EMF load so um, 
there might be some things that you have that that I would suggest you swap out so like wear wired earphones instead of earbuds is just one simple one um, we'll go over a lot of other ones during the course but there's things like that you don't have to give anything up but there might be some swapping that has to occur in order f to improve your emf environment um ooh, this is a good one will my will my internet speed be slower and actually the opposite is true when um we cut off the wireless signal and when we learn to hardwire things and and create a, a safe healing emf free environment or emf low environment um, actually your speed of your computer and your phone will be quicker um, because your phone your computer is not always going to be searching for this signal it's going to be bang connected right into the signal so there's not going to be um, slower speeds or anything like that and in fact um, your speeds are going to be higher so excuse me for any one of you who maybe you're an online uh, business owner maybe you um, do a lot of your work on the computer maybe you do a lot of marketing or social media on your cell phone um, maybe you're a podcaster and have to upload videos maybe you just like to um, um, connect with your favorite support groups on Facebook all of these things you're going to still have access to and your speed is not going to be um, impacted in a slow way in fact it will likely and every time I've done this with myself and a client um, speeds have actually increased so that's not going to be a concern lastly will my internet provider have to come to my home and if so will this cost extra on my internet bill really good question usually the the internet provider is very minimally involved initially they are involved in the, in this often doesn't entail them coming into your home this, uh, the swaps you make to, to um, hook up your internet and, and other devices um, without a wireless signal can often be done over the phone. And sometimes you can even do these on your own cell phone, depending on the company by downloading an app and we'll go over that during the course. Um, however, um, I have never had to pay more money for an internet provider to come out and help with this process um, it can typically be done in 99% of the time over the phone for no extra cost with just a few additional steps um, and let me see if there's anything else I want to touch on there um, so there can be some ways where a lot of people when they they start to learn this information and they really get into it and they own their home sometimes they want to like actually go in and um have an electrician come in and, and hardwire the home in a in a new way so there's not you know um it's just it's a cleaner type of energy and that's that's going to be obviously um an investment right there you don't have to go that route there's a lot of things you can do and that i'll teach you in the course um that you can do just from your home without having anybody come into the home and add things and pay for extra things it's not necessary um and you don't have to do that in order to lower your emf load um, for those who are building a home or who want to um, you know hardwire through their wiring of their home um, that will cost extra um, but it's definitely not a necessary step um, to reducing your emf load i hope that was helpful i appreciate um, you taking the time to watch this video and, and honestly this is a subject that most people um, aren't yet fully aware of the side effects, the impacts of um, EMFs, how they impact our physical and mental health. And when we start to make these changes, we often see really big shifts in our health, things that we've gone to doctors, um, naturopaths, um, healers, Western medicine doctors, um, things that we've taken prescription medicine for, um, things that we've even had surgery for, um, often can simply be traced back to excessive, excessive EMF exposure. And 
our knowledge of EMFs and how they impact our health and the environment started all the way back in the 1700s and 1800s um, when the telegraph started to be uh, come onto the scene and all the wiring from those things um, started to uh, fill major cities. And so as soon as that happened, the world started to become more electrified, so to speak. And this increased the, um, the electricity we've been exposed to, the, the frequencies taking us far out of the Schumann resonance and people have been um, documenting and having negative side effects from EMFs um, all the way back to the 1700s when this started to come onto the scene. Now, um, as we crept more towards Edison and um, uh, Westinghouse, you know, the AC power grid, the incandescent light bulb, electricity, this really upgraded, um, not in a great way, not in a, in a nice upgrade way, but in a detrimental upgrade way, um, even more so our exposure to uh, radio, microwave frequencies, and, and the, the voltages from uh, electricity. And so um, if we look back in history, we can see that there's been very major health shifts that have occurred every time we've bumped up our um, our or upgraded our electricity, our radio frequency, our microwave frequency exposure. And so this is continues to happen over time. Then radars, you know, were um, introduced, um, you know, so um, army bases could communicate with um, submarines and different countries. There were these very um, huge radar systems set up across in the United States tends to be um, often the first people to, to make these uh, upgrades. Thank you, you know, first world country. Thanks a lot. Um, but we tend to be the first to make these changes um, and it has a really big health impact and then other people tend to follow suit. Um, so, so then there were radars and then satellites were introduced and then the whole wireless, um, technology, um, is, you know, became introduced and now we're at this point, we're at this brink where 5G is being introduced and it's just started to be introduced in the past about, you know, one to two years. Um, and so we're seeing now as 5G is being deployed more and more significant, um, health effects from the deployment of 5G as we bump up yet again another level in um, radio and microwave exposure. So the plan of people who run these, uh, the government, the army bases, the cell phone companies, um, uh, these people, they don't have any plans to start degrading or downgrading um, our exposure. So this is when it's it's time for us to take our exposure into our own hands as much as we can and reduce it as much as we can um, and, and start to speak out about it. Start to just simply change your own home and your own workspace and other people are going to see it and they're going to take note and they're going to be curious and they're going to see, oh, John no longer has back pain or um, Debbie, you know, no longer has migraine headaches or Sue's now showing up to work and she her energy she's just changed. I don't know what what happened to her. Sue changed. She doesn't she's not anxious. She's super grounded. She's present. These are the shifts, these subtle shifts that that uh, with our health that you're going to start seeing in you and your kids as you start to mitigate your EMF environment. This is the key to health right now, more so than diet, more so than exercise, because it has the biggest negative impact on our mitochondria and on our brain and in our heart, where the bulk of our mitochondria are buried in our body. It's all over our body, but this these are the main two areas. Um, and you think of the, the even the Western medical profession, 
they're testing they they measure the frequencies in your brain they measure the frequencies in your heart they know there's electrical activity here what is one of the major side effects or most common i should say of emf toxicity heart arrhythmias heart palpitations brain pain brain fog depression and then poor gut health because it disturbs the gut brain access so this is a major area to consider, to fine tune, to improve. If you're someone out there who's, who's struggling with your health, I guarantee you, if you can rectify, improve, fix this one thing, that you will start to feel notice, noticeably better mentally and physically. It's been a huge, huge game changer for me. You know, I had a TBI, a traumatic brain injury, when I was 23 years old. And for years, I tried diet, I tried exercise, I tried every alternative and even uh, Western um, test to see what's wrong with me. How can I fix this? Let's try this, let's try this. And my symptoms uh, of my brain injury got worse over time because um, I was using my cell phone more, but then, also, the city I was living in, when my anxiety got really bad, they started to introduce smart meters. And so um, the houses were really close to each other, okay? And so all the smart meters, they have, the smart meters have an even higher radio frequency uh, than Wi-Fi. It's almost worse than Wi-Fi. Um, and so that my brain, uh, my TBI symptoms got worse. And even though I was trying all these things, doing all these things, exercising, eating awesome, um, getting every you know alternative treatment you could think of, um, doing MRIs, doing CAT scans, what's wrong with my brain? Oh, it's clear, it's clear, it's clear, it's clear. I don't feel clear. I don't feel like it's okay. It's not okay. So I started my online business um, and I went from, you know, doing more of a landscaping outside work to now I'm really on my computer, on my devices. And that's when, boom, things like really, really went downhill. It's like I got vertigo throughout my whole entire body. Um, if I felt so altered. And it took me about uh, one and a half to two years to really realize, hey, this isn't from something I'm doing. It's not because I'm failing with my diet or my exercise um, or anything like that. It's because my, the environment that I'm living in is literally a microwave and, and oven. And, um, and so I began to learn about how to mitigate my EMFs and um, I implemented those suggestions. Within a month I was feeling, you know, 80% better within two months, 95% better in three months. I was like totally better and my TBI was gone. So um, that was a, a huge wake up call for me. And these are these, these suggestions that I, that I made for myself and these changes are the exact same suggestions I give to my clients today um, to make so they can support their health because I give them a diet plan, of course, and I give them um, exercise suggestions, yes, but I say until you can do this thing around your EMFs, you won't see the biggest health shifts until until you start to incorporate these things. And that's proven to be true in me and in my clients um, for the past several years. Um, so this course is something I'm super passionate about because um, it, it, it penetrates near and dear to my heart with um, how I've improved my health, how I'm able to lead a life that I really love. Um, you know, I love to travel, I love to live in different places and I'm able to do so and still do my work and stay connected um, simply by uh, and not feeling sick and not harming my health by, by um, adding these EMF mitigation practices into my daily life. Thanks for joining me today. I hope this was helpful um, in clearing up some of your questions around EMFs and the EMF 101 course. Again, registration will be open for another three days. Um, and so if you're someone who's passionate about really stepping up your health, um, I would highly encourage you to join me for the course. And I'll look forward to seeing you there. See you soon.